dash cam, window switches, Escalade, D pillar covers, and back glass. The Tahoe build continues. So as always, if you're new here, this is my 2004 Z71 Tahoe. This is only episode two of this build series. So if you missed the first one, just click the link at the top of the screen. You can get all caught up and uh, you'll see the plans that I have in store. But today we have um, quite a few things going on. For one thing, yeah, the dash cam's going in. I need to do some repair work inside the driver's side door because a lot of the electronics, the door locks, the window switches, the window motor, uh, the door lock actuator, everything is basically just going out at once and I need to get all that stuff fixed. Then we're gonna be hopping out back. I am gonna be installing those Escalade D-pillar covers as well as a whole Escalade back glass with the uh, Escalade style third brake light. All right, so before we get to work, I gotta show you guys exactly what's going on here. Um, this has kind of been an ongoing problem since the winter. When it's really cold out, this thing does not want to go up. And even now it's going to give me a hard time. Come on. Very, very slow. When it's cold outside, it basically gets stuck and I have to keep jiggling the switch to get it to go all the way up. The rest work without a problem. That's pretty much the only one that's super slow. So we're just going to be changing this uh, driver's side window motor. The other issue I have is the door lock actuator on this door also went out. So you can see the switch, you know, works without a problem. All the other doors unlock and lock. This doesn't move. So I'm assuming uh, that just went out. And the last thing I want to try to do is fix the board here for the window switches. Once in a while, this lock button doesn't want to work. I have to press it really hard to get it to work. And the window switches don't seem to be working um, as I think they should. You know, they open and close the windows all right, but if you look, when I try to pull them up, it doesn't really do anything unless you really, really pull on it. And if you look at the back ones, which probably rarely got used, they work perfectly fine. All right, so for the backup camera, I've had this thing sitting in the house since December 2019, just waiting for me to install it, never got around to it. Um, it still seems to be a pretty good unit, even a year and a half later. Um, I got it off of Amazon. It wasn't the cheapest, it wasn't the most expensive. It was like 90 bucks. And they still sell this exact model on Amazon and it still has really, really good reviews. If you wanna go check it out, pick it up. I'm gonna put a link to it down in the description. Uh, nobody sent me this. I'm trying this out. I bought it on my own and um, it has some pretty good features. It records in 1080p HD. It's not 4K, but hopefully that's enough to see uh, license plates. It has motion detection. And not only was the price attractive and the uh, features, reviews, it has a front camera and a rear camera. All right, so I'm gonna start with the dash cam install. Everything unboxed here, uh, we have quite a few cables. This is the power cable. This is the cable that's gonna link the back camera to the front. You can see the whole unit itself is pretty compact. That's why I picked this up. It's got a screen. It kind of just hide up behind the rear view mirror and you wouldn't notice it too much. Back camera is pretty compact and small as well, but uh, this is everything we're gonna need to install this. And the reason I wanna do this first is because I have a little test. So this company called Top Don sent me this battery tester a while back. Um, I'm gonna put a link to their uh, store up on Amazon if you wanna go check this out, maybe pick one up. And I wanna test the Tahoe's battery here before putting the camera in. So basically I'm gonna run a battery test on here. We're gonna see what the CCAs are at, see what the voltage is at. Then we're gonna put the dash cam in. I'm actually gonna leave it running overnight and I wanna see if it's gonna kill the battery completely. And if not, um, exactly how much the voltage or the CCA is gonna drop from the uh, camera just staying on running all night. So let's uh, pop this thing open. Nice compact little unit. Now it is important you make sure your battery terminals, especially when you're dealing with side terminals, these need to be clean. Let's do uh, just a regular battery test. This is a 
800 CCA battery. All right, so perfect example. We have a check tester, 0%, 0%. And that is because I did not clean the side terminals prior to putting this on. So let's pop this off. I'm gonna go grab a wire brush, clean these really good, and then we're gonna try it again. All right, terminals are clean. Perfect. Good battery, health 100%, charge 88%. Uh, we got 12.53 volts out of, uh, you know, normals around 12.7. Uh, 905 cranking amps measured, 800 uh, cranking amp battery. This is normal, you're gonna get this, especially because the uh, truck was just running, I just drove it and parked it here. Uh, you're gonna get a higher rating, I get that a lot. Uh, when I test batteries at work. So yeah, this seems like a good little unit. I would definitely recommend it's compact, it's light, uh, very easy to use. If you guys are in the market for one, I'm gonna put a link to it down in the description. So it's the next day. I got a little good news. I got a little bad news. Starting off with the good news. Um, I came out this morning. I tested the Tahoe's battery. Tested great. It had 12.27 volts and 800 cold crank amps. I left this thing plugged in all night long. I came home from work last night. I plugged it in. So it's been running for about 10 hours overnight. Um, constant record mode, no motion detection, just full on recording everything it sees. And the Tahoe, it started without a problem. The battery only went down to 12.27 volts. I could totally see you getting to like probably 24 hours before you're in danger of actually killing the battery enough so it doesn't start. Um, the unfortunate problem is this doesn't have a dedicated parking mode. And what that comes down to is that the whole reason why we're here is because this thing got hit when I was parked and just regular motion detection mode on not only this cam, any dash camera, it seems to be very hit and miss, very janky. You want something with parking mode, not motion detect mode. So I have another camera on the way. In the meantime, we have a window regulator to do, a door lock actuator and some other stuff. So uh, let's get to work on that. All right, so I got the door broken down. We got the window regulator out. We got the door actuator out. Now, um, before you go pulling this panel off, I just want to warn you, uh, 1A Auto has a video showing how to remove 2000 to 2006 Tahoe um, Suburban, whatever, 
door panels. Now that only applies up until 2003. Mine's a 2004 and I actually broke my window switches on the other door following that video. For some reason, after 2003, GM decided to change the way the door panel kind of mounts and the window switchers are actually bolted or screwed into the door panel from the underside with two seven millimeters. So you can't go in here and just pop the switches out. They have to come out with the door panel. So uh, once you remove the little plastic sliding lock from the actual rod, we have a seven millimeter back there. Down right below the armrest, there's another seven millimeter. Those are literally the only two bolts holding this panel on the door. After that, after those two are removed, you could just literally slide the thing up and take it off and then uh, just unplug everything. If you want to take your window switches off, which we're going to be doing in a bit, just uh, unscrew them once the panel is off. Now, uh, once again, that's for 2004 and I'm assuming up until 2006. But with the actuator out, um, it's not too difficult. There are three electrical connectors and then you gotta pop all the rods off. There's a total of three rods. We got this one here that goes from the back of the actuator up to the door handle. I pulled it off from the door handle side just because it's really, really hard to get back here with it in the door. I'm just gonna transfer this over to the new part before we pop it back in. And then we have one going up to the door lock and then one going to the handle itself. Um, after that, you just remove the three torque screws and the thing falls right out. For the regulator, very, very simple. I have the window supported with some tape and um, it's just a bunch of 10 millimeters holding it to the inside of the door and a couple of 10 millimeters holding the uh, clamping the regulator to the window. Once you remove all those, it's literally just cable. So you can kind of fold it up and pull it out of the door. It's getting really hot and the sun's melting my tape. All right, let's get the window regulator in. Speed test. All right, that is a hell of a lot better than before. Door lock, awesome. All right, everything's working. So I got a little silicone spray here. Let's see if we could speed this up a little bit more. Let's get all in these guides. Friggin' awesome. The car isn't even running. Let's start it. It's probably gonna even get faster. Woo! Beautiful. Last thing I need to do is find some nuts for the bottom of this new regulator because for some reason they changed the design. It doesn't use bolts at the bottom like the old one did that has studs and they don't give you the nuts for the studs. So I'm gonna go source some of them. Um, before I throw this door panel on though, we need to start taking a look at these switches. So before we pull them apart, one more before try. Down without a problem. First thing you wanna do is take these tabs off and then that's gonna separate the housing from the actual switch assembly. You can already see these things are absolutely filthy. So no doubt in my mind, they're probably just gummed up with crap. Uh, next, we need to separate the switches from this lower body. We're gonna try to pry these tabs up. You can see there's actually some tamper-proof tape. We'll just peel that back. All right, well, my mic died, so please excuse the probably subpar audio, but with the back of that off, now we need to pull this bottom board out. Just like so, that clips into there with these pins. And now we need to get the very, very bottom one. That's where we're gonna be cleaning. And once again, this is just kind of clipped in there. So I'm just gonna come in here and carefully push these guys in. And that's what we're after. It honestly doesn't look that dirty. We'll pull this guy out too. That's basically it. Got our switches. They press down on this rubber. That presses down on the board. 
there's really nothing to it. It's not even like there are solder points here that could get weakened. It's just like a printed board. Bring in close here, you can see what I'm talking about. comes right off. All right, those actually came out really, really good. There's virtually no wear on any of those pads. They just kind of had little like black spots. And I think that's what was causing the problems. All right, let's see if they actually work though. All right, window test. Look at that. Barely any pressure. That worked absolutely perfectly. I called that a fix. It literally took maybe 20 minutes, some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. And it saved me $160 worth of janky aftermarket controls. Unbelievable. So onto the part I'm sure you've all been waiting for. Uh, what I have here is a rear window from an Escalade along with the two D-pillar covers. In the first episode of this build, I mentioned I was considering going to these, but I was on the fence. Some of you guys suggested just getting these, painting them black to kind of keep the uh, stock look of having the window kind of look like it wraps around. After doing a little research, I realized I didn't like the way the painted pillars looked with just the regular Tahoe glass. But when you pair it with the Escalade glass with this little spoiler slash uh, third brake light up here. It actually ties together really, really nicely. And uh, the paint and the color, it just, it, it flows really good with this glass. So we're gonna be installing this. I actually picked it up from a uh, subscriber over in Jersey. Once again, Jesse, thanks again for the uh, great deal on this. He included the glass with the uh, two pillars. These are in great shape. The uh, tabs are all intact. So they're gonna pop on without an issue. All right, so installing this, it's pretty straightforward. Um, everything's basically the same on the Escalade glass as it is on here. We have these uh, two defroster tabs on the Escalade glass as well. And the only thing we really got to change is the third brake light. So we're going to unbolt the Tahoe one and we got a wire in the Escalade. But uh, let's get these C-clips out of here, pop the shocks off, and the glass will come right off. All right, so I got the clips out of the support struts here. Let's just take them off. Our clips are off the brackets, so we could just slide this to the left. Off the pins. And she should come out. third brake light held up like crap. I got this off of eBay when I did the lights, badges, wheels, and tires video. It's all yellow. And I noticed the other day that two of the LEDs are out. I think over here, let me hit the brakes, see if you can see.
awesome. Look at that. I really got to get a new set of shocks for this, especially now with the little extra weight of the brake light. They are long overdue to be replaced, but that fits absolutely perfectly. And yes, it does fit with the Z71 kayak roller roof rack. Plenty of space. All right, so we got the glass on. I hate to leave you guys hanging like this, but I'm not gonna be putting the pillars on today. Um, just because this has a lot to get painted. This is gonna get painted the body color. And these can be a little finicky to get off, especially uh, this bottom tab. Apparently it likes to break off. So I really have no need to put this on just to have it taken off so they could paint it. So to prevent possibly break any of these tabs, I'm gonna leave them off. I guess we should probably get the third brake light hooked up. All right, so the Escalade glass already has a boot on it. So I think I'm gonna just cut this off and I'm going to splice them together. Actually, no, I can't splice them. I need some kind of a connector or this thing is not gonna... Uh, so to get the brake light wired up, I just went to AutoZone. I grabbed these uh, little bullet connectors and I'm just gonna crimp them on each end because these two connections are different. And obviously we need to keep a connector here, especially since I'm probably gonna pull the brake light off to have it painted. Let's just go for a shot in the dark here. I don't know what the polarity is supposed to be. Well, let's try that first. Is it working? It's a stupid little coincidence, but the LEDs in the Escalade light actually match perfectly with the LEDs in the tail light, so that's kind of cool. Look at that. Just like factory. All right guys, so I got the dash cam installed. We've got our door switches working, um, window motor, super fast now, door locks work, and we have the Escalade glass installed. Yeah, lastly, I just threw the dash cam in. I ended up going with this Blackview unit. 
it was pretty expensive. It was like $360 compared to the 100 I spent on the other one. Uh, but it has a dedicated parking mode. It got really good reviews. And um, I'm going to give you guys an update as I continue to use it and kind of figure everything out. I literally just installed it. It powered up. It's recording. So at the end of this video, I'll throw some footage right at the end so you can see the quality of the front and back camera. Um, install was really simple. It came with a hardwired kit, three connections, accessory power, so key on power, constant battery if you want to use parking mode, and the uh, ground. And that was it. I ran all the wires. Fits up there really nicely. And um, yeah, hopefully this will uh, catch any scaffolding that might hit uh, Tahiti in the future. For back here, I ended up just mounting the rear camera to the plastic that's actually stationary in the back. So essentially we could open and close this without an issue. It's not gonna, you know, we don't have to worry about wires being pulled or anything. The only thing I'm concerned about, I haven't looked at the dash cam footage yet, is whether or not this is gonna be an issue because I didn't realize the hatch kind of hangs lower than this, but I can aim it down. So I'm hoping it'll see through the glass fine and this isn't gonna be a problem, but uh, yeah. Install super simple, looks really clean. As for the next episode, we're gonna be tackling uh, all the body stuff. Front and rear bumpers are going on. We're gonna go pick up and install the new hood and we're gonna put on the um, HD grill. So all that's gonna be covered. And then after that, I think it's gonna be ready for paint. But for now, that's gonna do it for this one. See you guys in a few days.